Why do I worry? Why am I negative? Why am I not positive? When we worry, we tend to think. We think so much to the extent that we have headache. When we worry, we tend to cry because we don't know what the future holds. We are overwhelmed because we are curious about the future. But there's no need to worry at all because Jesus Christ told us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 that we should be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds with Christ. This means that we can tell God everything and that we can cast all our burdens to Him because He's ready to hear us. Join us this month of November as we go through a series of worries and encourage you that all will be well and Jesus Christ is with us. Bye! Happy New Month everyone. My name is Omodu Akachi and here with me is... I am Idekolade. First of all, we want to quickly recap on what we talked about last month. Last month, we, talk about, we talked about parental attention and the different types of parental attention. So, Ayo, what did you take from that? What I took, I basically just took the understanding about how to cope with your parents' expectations for you and how to try to be your best for them to make them proud and all. Yeah. So, we want to quickly take a word of prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty Mom Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for making us to have this little conversation in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as we start, I pray you start with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to manifest in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for answered prayers. Amen. For Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's quickly join the praise and worship.
welcome back from the praise and worship section i really hope you enjoyed it because i was dancing up my feet all the time thank you god for all the wonderful things he has done for us so we're going to talk about worry today and ayo my first question is that what is the most recent thing that you're worried about i'm worrying about my exams that i have at the end of this month i don't feel that prepared because it's a new class i know what about you well I was worried about something. I don't think I'm worried about anything now. I was worried that I will flaunt in the new class because when I was in junior school, I did exceptionally well because yes, I did I would focus on my studies and I read a lot and I also prayed a lot. But there was this new girl that came. She was brilliant, of course, we're all brilliant in our own way. So she she will we were competing together what in the sense that if I get 83 percent she get 84 if I get 85 she get 86 but then she took off if I now get 88 she'll get 90 or 92 to the point that she even got like third of her own best so I felt downcasted I was really sad because I then felt that I was no longer intelligent because when I now enter GS3 I dropped woefully then from class to class to class to class. It was really bad, but now that I'm in another class and I actually found out that with God that everything is okay. So I'm not actually worried about anything because God has taken absolute care of everything because this SS1 now has been a blast. Like I've been doing very, very well in my studies and with God, I'm also doing my personal time. So yes, what's the difference between concern and worry? Like to me, I feel like concern, concern promotes positive action. Well, like worry, worry burdens you and your mind. Like you know the story of Jonah and how God, God was concerned about the people of Nineveh, and that's why God sent Jonah to them. Yeah. But if he was worried, he would just have been wondering, wondering, wondering. He would not have taken action, and that's the thing that affects all of us. I'm concerned about what I'll wear. I'm worried about what I'll wear. I'm worried about what I'll eat. But God knows what's ahead and all. So they can use that scripture like Jonah and God was worried but God was concerned and he took action. So instead of being worried about something, we can take it to the point of being concerned about it. Being concerned about having good grades. Okay, I'm concerned. I need to do very well. If you are concerned, you will read. You will do exceptionally well. But if you are worried, no, you will not even want anybody to even come and encourage you. You just be sitting down there and start thinking and worrying. And that leads us to the impact of worry. So what's the impact of worry? When I'm worried, I feel, I feel like emotionally I'm drained. I'm not able to put that much effort into my friendships, into schoolwork as well. But then another thing is that when I'm worried, what I feel helps is just talking to people. And that's why when you're worried, you should talk to people, speak out, talk to God as well. Because it comes from a place you have to have faith in God. Yeah. Well, to me, I'll be for me, emotionally, I'm a, I'm a very emotional person. So anytime I get worried, I usually cry. I cry a lot and then it just gives me a headache. And it's not like I can't go to God. I can go to Him, but I mean, in that state I am now, then, sorry, I could not, I could not think straight. I couldn't think properly. So if I'm going to God, I'm like, God, I'm just crying as I'm telling Him everything. So even as I'm telling him, I'm not having faith that he's even hearing me. So it affects us spiritually because we feel that we can't even go to God or we can't even go to any other person because we're worried about the future because the future holds what nobody knows. It's, it's, it's yet, we are yet to know what it's going to give better. So all we have to do is just to put our trust and our hope in God. And that leads us, takes me to a scripture that I like very well, Joshua 1 9 says that the Lord your God will be, will be with you everywhere we go. Just like you're walking on the street. Because now this is the Gen Z generation, so I used to that you come and pick me in his limousine. So if you're just going to buy something in the nearby shop, you're just like, is anybody going to take, hurt me? Is anybody going to attack me? And carry me. <laughs> carry me away from me. And that leads me to a story. I was jogging on my street as I love doing. And then a regular guy just comes up to me that was also jogging. And he was like, are you this thing, this estate? And I was like, yes, I do. Before I know it, he came again and asked me, I was like, what do you want from me? Then he was like, he wants to get my number. 
and my head are like, what do you need my number for? As in, you're just a random guy. I don't need you for anything. As for you're not going to help me in my life at all. So I find myself waiting outside the gates of his house to collect the number. Immediately I go home, I give it to my dad. My dad was like, is this what you guys do? All these youths, you come and you take number from young, young girls. You think I don't know what you're going to do? He can't end it. The man was explaining, no, I did not mean it that way. We went to his house. Ah, oh, I wanted to, I hated myself because my mom was not shouting at me. My mom was not like, why would you do such a thing? I learned from it though. But at the same time, I was worried because I did not want, I did not want it to become a habit because I need to know when to distance myself. I need to know how to set boundaries. So you have to also know that Jesus Christ is actually going to be there for you. And you should not worry because the more you think, you just be worried and you just be sad. That's true. Any other verse you want to share? I feel like a lot of us nowadays, things that we're worried about so are like material things. All right, okay, my friend has this shirt. Uh, let me go and see where I should buy this. My friend has these shoes. I know. And it's something I'm guilty of too. But one thing in the Bible is Matthew 6 verse 25. And like it goes that we shouldn't be worried about our clothes, what we eat or drink, or our bodies because that is not life. That's not what life is all about. I know. I also remember the story that my husband's stress told me, I'm in body school, so she told me of someone that was just walking on the streets. And like it was a bushy area like bushy so kidnappers or armed robbers or anybody can just come out of nowhere so she was walking on the streets and then she was like oh my god help me please i don't know everywhere is so cringe and everywhere is just bushy then the kidnappers they came out they couldn't attack her they were like what's up and then they were like can't you see there's someone standing beside her can't you see that there's like a figure standing beside her and the girl didn't even know that like Jesus Christ was like literally standing and then the bad people could literally see Jesus Christ there. And that was the story amazed us all. It made us know that there's no need to worry because she was worried, she was afraid, she was she was thinking that what will happen to me, that this is a bush and then no one knows what will happen. Maybe a snake and just crawl and just bite her or something. But Jesus Christ was there for her. So can you like pray for the worried people out there? Because Wayek is around the corner, jam and all those exams that are very useful in our life. And people are thinking, people don't know because there are stories around about people that didn't do well. that had to like write it like three times. So can you like pray for them? That's true. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Lord. We thank you for all of us. We thank you for our worries, oh Lord. Well, thank we put you. them up to you in faith. We pray for them. Lord, we pray that even us that we are worried ahead, we are worried for what we don't know about. We know that you have the future in your hands, oh Lord. Yeah. Lord, you have everything in your hands under your control. Yeah. We pray that you guide our paths, oh Lord. Mm-hmm. You shall calm us and guide us. Yeah. You shall teach us the way and fill us with your faith, oh Lord. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. One thing I would also love us to note is that this world will soon end and that whatever we gain now, we're going to steal it at the end. Because social media is is corrupting us all. Because you can see someone with a brand new car and that is not that car. That's even fake life. And then you also want to show your friends that yes, I live in a very big house. I just got this new pair of shoes, this cargo pants. And that. that's what is just raining. And then you talk me to your mom, mommy, let me get this, not to get it. And then if your mom and the economy now, your mom may not have enough savings for that. But you just have to know that God will always provide for you. And He'll always provide for us despite the way the economy is right now. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mighty Moon Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this section. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that you've reached out to others that are feeling worried about one little thing or the other in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that you help them to know that you always be with them every step of doing Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for answered prayers. Amen. Friends, just some more Amen. Amen. We still have topics to talk about, three more amazing topics, so that you know that Jesus Christ is there and there's no need to worry about. Bye. Bye.